That's right. Back at it again. Full custom hot dog, baby. And we're doing another Blu-ray review. That's right. We're going to be talking about 1995's Mortal Kombat. A film based on a video game. Uh, we're doing this because tonight, this evening, the newest entry in this franchise comes out. And if you follow me on Twitter, I don't post much, but recently my posts have been a little bit more Mortal Kombat centric. And I am very excited. I, I'm a fan of the series. Have been since I was a little a little chief. You know, just chiefing about. And, uh, you know, I was born in the, uh, in the 80s. I'm no spring chicken, so being a kid and seeing this game get played in the arcades was nuts <laughs> i don't think i even okay i did see it in the arcades eventually but the first time i saw a mortal kombat game the mortal kombat game the arcade was at a taco shop a little mexican uh, mexican restaurant and <laughs> not a restaurant mexican fast food joint it's not even a restaurant i wouldn't call it and uh it was getting played and i saw that and i was like holy holy guacamole papa those look like real people in the video game and uh because the graphics are wild i mean sure they're dated now but back then it was very rare to see digitized people into games i don't think it became more popular until a little bit later and i, I probably by a few years you know i think you had pit fighter just before this that did it and i remember seeing that i always thought that kind of looked like garbage but with mortal kombat it just looked cool and there's ninjas and uh, I'm getting a little ahead of myself, which I'm probably going to do. But anyways, the newest entry is coming out. If you haven't seen the launch trailer, check out the launch trailer. It is awesome. I am beyond stoked. I even took the next day off from work. I'm going to be doing that. So you can holler at me on Twitter. Full custom hot dog. Well, this is just on my Twitter. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just excited. I, I, I've been with the franchise every game. And uh, this one just seems like the best one. And they all just get better, well, except in the case of like 3 to 4 and 2 to 3. And then some of those 3D ones were just pretty bad until uh, 9. But then those got better, each one. So yeah, this just looks fantastic. I'm very stoked. Check out the trailer. Um, it even uses the wonderful, wonderful theme song, the Mortal Kombat theme song, uh, which most of you will probably know. That came from this movie. And it's kind of not the only thing to come from this movie that kind of became Mortal Kombat canon. Uh, but anyway, uh, I digress. Let's talk about this Blu-ray release. I'm waxing nostalgic here. So, uh, it's a fine release. It's very okay. Um, decent picture and audio quality. Nothing to really write home about. It's the movie on Blu-ray. And uh, what really disappoints me, though, is the lack of special features and yeah, that does get me a lot. Uh, it's no surprise though, it's a disc put out by, looks like just New Line, Warner Brothers, so a little bit of a bummer there. Uh, you've got the trailer for the video game, and that video game trailer is Mortal Kombat 9, by the way. It's not even 10, it's an older release. Uh, you've got the trailer, and there's no commentaries or anything. There's no behind the scenes, which is very disappointing because I definitely distinctly recall some uh, behind the scenes stuff coming out. I don't know if it got released on a DVD or VHS, but it definitely, I definitely made it on a TV at some point because they were they were talking about how they did Goro, which translates very phenomenal, uh, very well done. Um, but so so normally, given everything I mentioned, this would get a probably a C because what the hell's on this disc, right? You've got a a decent version of this film, which should be better in my opinion. Uh, of course, but I'm biased, obviously. But I also think it's uh, it's a great translation of a video game, but we'll get to that later. Um, you should have a little bit more beef on this. So, yeah, that's a C grade. However, this is getting bumped to a B, maybe a B plus, because on this disc is <laughs> the <laughs> Mortal Kombat The Journey Begins. And if you don't know what that is, it's a garbage tier cartoon that you think should be lost to the sands of time but it is on this disc and it is awful if you need to see it in action um angry video game nerd did a fantastic video about it and it is trash maybe i'll try to loop in a clip or something i don't know 
but it looks it looks it's impressively awful uh so definitely bumps that up a grade because i think something like that like i mentioned would just be gone it would i think it came out on vhs or something around the time of the film and just disappeared it's got uh poorly 3d rendered backgrounds that look like veggie tales with some 2d animated stuff a lot of cut and paste looking uh characters it's it is it is rough stuff and incredibly boring very odd to see them try to take this game that's based on brutality and gore and blood and fighting and turn it into a tale of friendship that's very odd uh friendship again so yeah a decent uh, a poor release made decent or better by a goofball uh animated film which is kind of worth a watch i suppose but anyways, let's talk about the film Mortal Kombat. If you do not know what Mortal Kombat is about, well, according to IMDb, three unknowing martial artists are summoned to a mysterious island to compete in a tournament whose outcome will decide the fate of the world. And yeah, that pretty much is what the game about was, or the game was about at first. Um, it is, it is um, reasonably close to the film, but also does take some wild... Uh, liberties with the lore which I'm, I'm i'm fine with if you can give me a good product make it fun and uh you know be be interesting about it uh they they kind of as a kid i, I feel i felt like i was a bit more of a stickler on some of this stuff but uh i still had a blast i remember coming out of the theater not upset and even re-watching this now uh, i do revisit this time to time you know it, it it still holds up for the most part some dodgy cg of course things like uh Scorpion Spear, uh, Sub Zero's Ice, uh, Reptiles Chameleon Form, they call it, all uh, don't exactly hold up. But everything else surprisingly does it. And the film as a whole really, really does too. Uh, but we didn't even talk about the deets of the film. It's directed by Paul W.S. Anderson, someone whose career I, I think I hate his career. <laughs> Maybe it's because of what he's done to Resident Evil, which I've heard the Japanese love the Resident Evil movies so much they're canon. I don't know how true that is. Uh, Mortal Kombat is his first big budget film. He did, I think, a smaller film called Shopping, and people went like, whoa, it's so cool what you were able to do on a limited budget. Here's this movie based on Mortal Kombat. And he was a fan. And uh, you might kind of roll your eyes if you're not familiar or you're more familiar with celebrities these days. But Mortal Kombat back in the day was a was a phenomenon. Mortal Mondays, uh, my parents knew about Mortal Kombat, and it's such a trip. How familiar my dad is with some of the lore trips me out. He loved this movie, which is weird. When you're a kid and you can drag your parents to a movie and they really like it, that that made me stoked. Um, but yeah, so he was a fan of Mortal Kombat, as were definitely parts of the cast and crew. So I, I, I think that's uh, incredibly interesting, and they they really were not like phoning it in. Uh, Paul West, W.S. Anderson, Paul West Anderson, P.T. Anderson, uh, also directed Event Horizon, which is, I recall it being good. I heard it does not hold up well. I would like to revisit that at some point. Uh, Soldier, which I believe is the, uh, well, who is that? Kurt Russell? The other one? Yeah, Kurt Russell, which is... And it was initially written as a spin-off sequel of Blade Runner. Uh, and then he also, not and then, but he also did Alien vs. Predator. And probably most famously did the Resident Evil films. All of them. And uh, now he's doing Monster Hunter. Another video game series that I love. I love Monster Hunter. Been with that one since the beginning too. And he's doing the movie with, of course, his wife, Mila Jovovich in it and it breaks my heart every time i read about it because it does not sound like it cares about the game at all and it hurts me to talk about also in the film we have uh christopher lambert who picked up the role after sean connery denied it they wanted sean connery to be rated sean connery literally pretty much said he would rather golf than do another physical role so he didn't do it we so we got christopher lambert and that's lambert not lambert He's a Frenchman. He was. He's even for this new Mortal Kombat game. He is in the French commercials, which I think is really cool. He believed in this movie so much. He went 
they, they, they didn't want to send him to Thailand. They didn't want to pay to send him to Thailand because that would take most of his time. So they were going to just do the close-up shots with him and have doubles while they shot in on location in Thailand. Christopher Lambert said, no, it's going to be more believable if I'm there. Handled it, went there, didn't didn't uh, overcharge them. And he even paid for the Cavs party afterwards. That is a dope-ass dude. We've also got Robin Shu playing the hero Liu Kang. Uh, tons and tons of martial arts experience. Also is in the Sleeping Dogs movie. Oh no, video game. But there's a Sleeping Dogs movie coming out. Somebody, I, I can't remember who's going to be in that. But uh, tons and tons of stuff. He's responsible for the greatest fight scenes in this movie. Those fight scenes are the Scorpion, uh, Scorpion Johnny Cage fight in the, I think it's a rubber tree forest. And then you've got a, a Reptile versus Liu Kang. Another great fight. Both those fights also weren't supposed to be in the movie. Uh, the Scorpion fight was supposed to end with the kick before they go to the Nether Realm, and that was going to be it. And the Reptile fight wasn't going to be a fight. It was going to be Liu Kang throwing Reptile into the statue, and that was it. That statue was to act as his tomb, but audiences lost their nanners watching this film and said, hey, there need to be more fights. So they went back, reshoot, redid it. They did not have their choreographer, but uh, Robin Shu stepped in and uh, went to work, made those fights look awesome. And it's also credited as being one of the first big budget Hollywood films to use uh, what, what is it called? The the wire wire dancing? Hold on, I'm looking that up right now. I, I sound like an idiot. <laughs> uh, wire work martial arts techniques. Uh, it was something that he worked with in Hong Kong, and so technically it's the first big Hollywood film to use that. Almost surprising. Um, Goddamn, I don't even know where I'm at. I'm, I'm fanboying and ranting so hard about this movie. Uh, Anyways, uh, lot, lots of fun facts you could say. Can, this was supposed to be one of Cameron Diaz's first films. She got hurt. I think it was during The Mask. Uh, we almost got Christina Applegate to replace her. Or no, she was going to replace Christina Applegate as uh, Sonya Blade. Uh, tons of callbacks to this film. So this movie comes out the same year, I believe, as MK3. And it mostly contains Mortal Kombat 1 and 2 lore. So you're not going to be seeing cyber robots. You're not going to be seeing Motaro. You're not going to be seeing all that stuff that's going to be in the much, much, much inferior sequel. But um, I, I, I'm going to stop dropping all this trivia and the differences in the game stuff. But uh, I think it's kind of one of the uh, best, if not the best, video game adaptations. Um, one of the really cool things, too, if you're a fan, is... Uh, Kano being Australian comes from this movie. He was originally Japanese American and they just thought it worked so much that they kept it. And that's him to this day. Also, the soundtrack went platinum in a couple weeks, which is amazing as well for a video game movie to be tied into culture. I mean, Mario Brothers definitely did not have that same effect. Film-wise, of course. Uh, and Jean-Claude Van Damme turned down the role of Johnny Cage. But I'm rambling. Uh, I, I like this movie a lot. There's definitely parts I could do without, but for the most part as a whole, this still is such a blast. And those fight scenes, the the my, like I mentioned, the scorpion one and the reptile one, I still love so, so dearly. And I, I, I still go back to when I was a kid and just eating this all up. And it's also incredible watching this again to... Uh, I mean, people die. You have uh, the character Arlene, who's a character unique to the film. I don't think has ever appeared in any of the games. Uh, gets killed. And uh, but nothing brutal or gory. It's very surprising that they were able to do it justice, make it right, and still hold back on the gore and all the gross stuff. Uh, and not a complaint from me at all. Uh, I, I'm, I'm okay with it. And it's also surprising how well the plot of Mortal Kombat translates, or I guess I should say the plot of a video game, right? Uh, most games obviously seem to have trouble with bringing that to life, but what a lot of people may not necessarily know about Mortal Kombat is it was inspired by kung fu films if it's not blatantly obvious right uh, also a lot of B-movies inspired it as well uh, I think Raiden was loosely based on one of the characters from Big Showdown in Little Tokyo Big Trouble in Little China Jesus um, so yeah and I think all of those influences it being so directly influenced by I mean, this film would work without a video game. This would be, still be fun. It'd be weird. It'd be weird as hell, but it would still be incredibly fun and uh, probably have half the budget, I'm sure. 
But anyways, if you haven't seen Mortal Kombat, check it out. If you want this on Blu-ray, pick it up. I think it's like six or seven bucks, absolutely worth a buy, and I, I, I can almost guarantee you'll watch it more than a couple times. So, anyways, enough fanboying for me. I'm going to be playing Mortal Kombat for the next couple days, and uh, uh, I'm going to try to do more videos. I don't know. I've got a big week coming up with Mortal Kombat, and I'm moving, so all of my stuff right now, most of my movies, which I packed first because there's so many, are in boxes sitting next to me, and hopefully when I get to my new apartment, I'll be doing some shelfy videos. I'm going to get that organized because I'll finally have a little bit more room and stuff. Uh, very, very excited. So, um, thank you for watching. As always, I am Full Custom Hot Dog. You can holla at me on Twitter. It's Full Custom Hot Dog, but not the last O, oh, because that is just too long for Twitter. Also, last fact, uh, Ed Boon does the voice of Scorpion, and I love it because anytime I think of Scorpion yelling, get over here, I hear it with Ed Boon's voice. And looking at the man... I never picture uh, I never pictured that to be scorpions. It's kind of cool. Okay, I'm done. That was the last one. And uh, until next time.